right, let's talk about some basics of cells. So eukaryotic cells is what we'll focus on in this class. All eukaryotic cells have a nucleus. Human, all human cells are eukaryotic cells. Some exceptions, the no nucleus thing, right? Red blood cells actually don't have a nucleus and they are still eukaryotes. But we're not going to the, to the, those nuances right now. We're gonna talk about the basics. So let's start off by looking at a basic eukaryotic cell. What almost all of them have. You can pause the video and label some components here. Plasma membrane, that's important. It's also called the cell membrane. The cell membrane is actually a fossil lipid bilayer. So having these two different layers drawn here, two different circles, is slightly more accurate. Um, we'll get into the details of the structure of it next week. Um, it's this fossil lipid bilayer along with a bunch of proteins, which are really important, and some cholesterol. And the plasma membrane is important for separating the outside of the cell from the inside of the cell. The outside of the cell has a fluid called the extracellular fluid, or ECF. The inside of the cell has a fluid called the intracellular fluid, intra, inside, or ICF. The ICF is the same thing as cytosol. It's the aqueous fluid inside the cell. And the separation of inside and outside is important for maintaining homeostasis. There's a nucleus. The nucleus is where eukaryotic cells contain their genetic material, so DNA in this case, that has the instructions to make all the proteins that our cells need to make that vary based on what cell type it is, that cell specialization. And lastly, actually, we have the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is actually kind of a big term. It encompasses both the cytosol, what's another word for cytosol? ICF as well as all the organelles. So there's a whole bunch of organelles. I'll talk about a few today. You'll see a few in lab. We're not going to go in a whole ton of detail on a lot of them. We won't see them, most of them, with a microscope. Um, we'll kind of talk about some as we need to, um, for example, mitochondria. And so I'll introduce a couple right now. Here's, so here's the basic cell. Here is the complicated cell. There's a whole lot more going on here. We still have the same structure as plasma membrane, Nucleus contains chromatin, that is actually the packaged DNA, and the nucleolus. Then all this stuff in here is the cytoplasm. So the cytosol is the aqueous um, solution in between all of the organelles. And all these organelles are shown here. I'm going to highlight a few. Um, the endoplasmic reticulum, there's smooth and rough. Rough endoplasmic reticulum is rough because it has ribosomes. Ribosomes make proteins, so this is involved in protein production. Smooth ER, on the other hand, is more important for lipid production. So steroid hormones are going to be what um, I care about most in the smooth ER. Mitochondria are important for ATP production, so our powerhouses, and they actually I thought to have to, they used to be prokaryotic cells. They have their own DNA. They don't have a nucleus. We've got the Golgi apparatus. So synthesis of carbohydrates as well as packaging of proteins in order to um, transport them out of the cell. So this vesicle right here that is being released here is actually, so all these organelles, most of them are actually also covered in membrane, plasma membrane. So the cell membrane is one of the plasma membranes. So this is actually a bit of membrane that is budding off here and is going to fuse with the cell membrane and release um, whatever it is that was produced. And we'll talk more about transport mechanisms like that next week. But the main point is Golgi apparatus vesicle packaging is one of its functions. Then we've got these cytoskeletal elements. So filaments is what I have for your key terms for now. Filaments is a pretty general term that refers to proteins that are inside the cell that are important for structure. Microtubules, intermediate filaments are shown here that actually give the cell shape. Um, myofilaments are going to be a specialized type in muscles that we'll talk about. Um, cilia are actually another one I have in your key terms for now because we will see those quite a few times, including this week for in the trachea slides. Um, cilia are little finger-like extensions off of the cell that then can actually move around and wiggle junk out of your um, respiratory tract. I think the last one on the list, I'll check it at the end, is inclusions. Inclusions are not membrane-bound. 
There are other stuff in the cell. So for example, fat in adipocytes, um, pigments such as melanin, that's part of your skin and eyes and hair that gives color, um, are in these areas called inclusions, which are kind of just kind of separate compartments that aren't membrane bound, but just like other stuff inside, other accumulated cell products. They either can be foreign like bacteria or dust, or those ones I mentioned, fats and pigments that you kind of want to have inside your cell. So that is the detail of the cell. Two last things I believe that I want to talk about with basic cell stuff. One is size, one is shape. Both can vary, as you might imagine. So let's do shape first because it's, it's shown here. These are the various shapes your cells can be. Um, squamous is squatted, cube, and columnar. These you'll see quite a bit with the epithelial tissue types. Um, and you'll see all different other shapes as well. So these would be red blood cells are discoidal. Fusiform is would be muscle cells that are kind of spindle shaped for contraction. Smooth muscle are, are this shape. Fibrous are another important type, collagen, keratin, um, other fibrous proteins that are long. So these are the various ways that cells can change shape based on their cytoskeleton during development.